Thank you, Ms. Jill Joseph, for being here to talk with us about your documentary. Thank you I very much for having me. I, I appreciate the invitation. You are Dominican by nationality, Dominican by nationality, but you reside in Canada. I'm Dominican. Dominican. Uh, Dominican born, <laughs> Canadian naturalized. <laughs> naturalized. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, can you tell us what was the initial inspiration that led you to create this documentary? Um, first of all, um, the reason why I I decided to venture out to tell the story of the indigenous people of Dominica uh, was as a result, I was, I was actually doing my master's degree in media production at the Toronto Metropolitan University, formerly known as Ryerson University. And um, I, I've always been very passionate about covering communities, advocating for minority groups uh, uh, that, that I'm part of. And I felt compelled to share their story uh, for many reasons. M one, my great grandmother was Kalinago mm -hmm. and I learned the Creole language, which isn't her mother tongue but she knew Creole. Um, so I learned the Creole language through her when she came to live with us when I was a little girl. Um, and I also witnessed my mom, who was a nurse, a district nurse at the time, uh, traveling to the, it was called the Carib Reserve at the time, but it's now mm -hmm. the Calinago territory. Right. Um, so traveling there to bring our used clothes and um, she would bring regular league food items to Kalinago people. And uh, later on in, in my life, I, I remember she would take my sisters. Um, I'd since moved to Canada, but she would take my sisters. She had a, 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 an entire ministry at church. They would make annual trips, you know, to bring food items to the Kalinago people. So in my mind, I always saw the Kalinago people as um, disadvantaged, um, almost outcast from society because there were so many uh, derogatory terms that were used to, to relate to them, some of which are still used today. Um, and I felt if I'm going to write on or, or cover something or research something that I needed to do something that would advocate for change. Okay, well, it's a great documentary. Okay, <laughs> now the Kalinago territory refers to that 3,700 acre of land that has been established for the Kalinago people, right? Yes. And um, did they inherently, did they, you know, is it theirs? You know, so like... The history of the the 3,700 acre um plot of land that they've been um, sequestered to, I should say, mm -hmm. is what was or, um, back in 1902, uh, it became something that uh, there was almost like a treaty, like an arrangement between the, the powers at the time and the Kalinago people to, to give them property or give them land that, that they would live on and Essentially, uh, the the it wasn't referred to as crown land, um, but what happened? Uh, there are many things that happened in this. Is it was it was looked at as a good thing then because there they were trying to have this plot of, of this 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 space, but if you look at the the general terrain of this of this land, um. It isn't the land that is that that Kalinago people essentially or indigenous people essentially uh, would use for for um, for agriculture. It's not the best land. Oh. It's also not close to the ocean, where if you know historically, indigenous people do a lot of fishing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it was almost like they were given the worst part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and and historically, we've seen that happen across the board in many different places where indigenous people 
have yeah. been sort of reserved to a, to a plot of land. Um, and as a result, they've lived on there ever since, you know, so they've almost like they've been placed on this land and said, this is your land. It's communal land. You can't sell it. You mm -hmm. can't, you can share it amongst the, like you can, you can trade amongst each other. Um, but unfortunately the, the most, the most harmful part about this is that they can never use this land for example, to go to the bank to get a loan, to start a business, to <laughs> so it is it is unfortunately not a good thing, so to speak. So is it just land that they live on? That yeah, they so can... they live, they can live on it, they can build on it, they can farm, they could do all sorts of things with the land. But you know, like one of the things that we know as 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 black people let's say because you and i are black and you know mm -hmm. uh one of the things we know is that land is supposed to be um is supposed to be a, a way of of um advanced advancing ourselves yes, we use, right. advance ourselves yeah right. so we'll use it as collateral to to go to the bank to get a mortgage to mm -hmm. build a house mm -hmm. We'll use it as um, to go if we want to send our kids to a prestigious school. We'll use it if we want to start a business. The Kalinago people cannot do any of those things. Oh, my gosh. Okay. It's so sad. <laughs> now, do you, are, are they the Kalinagos? Can they be compared to the Tainos of the Caribbean? Yes. So, yes. They, so, so Kalinago, and there again comes the historic... Um, background of it is their their original name or the name that they were given I should say by colonizers were Caribs Caribs yes so so you may know them as the Caribs and the Arawaks which mm -hmm. were essentially the Kalinago and the Tainos wow yeah so the Kalinago people fought for their name for that name to be reversed and it was only in 2015 um did they regain control right regain their their rightful name which is Kalinago. Kalinago. So they've uh, they they ask for it to be struck off uh, and mm -hmm. they're not referred to as Caribs mm -hmm. because Carib essentially was a derogatory term that colonizers had used and uh, which termed them as barbaric and oh. warlike and wow. all of these different things. So yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, while you were doing your research, you spent some time, right, with some of the descendants of the island's first people, right? Mm -hmm. How was that experience, traveling Ooh. with them and learning? Um, <laughs> it's very different than visiting. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you to see. Because yeah. when you, like how it's, it's set up, you can go through the Kalinago territory on the regular roads and go mm -hmm. right through um, in terms of the coastline of it, you right. don't actually get into the community. Yeah. So, so what? How it's set up right now is you would find like a lot of um, basket weavers, cassava makers mm -hmm. along the, the coastline when you travel through, and it's it's great for tourism. Tourists can stop off. You can see them yeah. making their stuff. You can purchase and all of these things. But when you get into the community that's when you see like so my very 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 first time going into the community um i had heard about a, a teacher who was very like like headstrong she was she, right. she's a, she was considered like headstrong like nobody would mess with her and i wanted to kind of like cuz cuz i try to pinpoint people who are outspoken because i felt it would be easier to get them to come and speak on camera to get them that that sort of stuff so i went to a school where she was it was a covid still <laughs> so obviously i didn't expect students to be at the school um, you had to wear a mask and everything. And when I arrived at the school with my team, because my crew was, was always with me, my, my camera crew was always with me, um, there were there were children in the school, like in little pockets, mm -hmm. right? So I was like, I found that kind of strange because I know from <laughs> knowing all of the children were doing school online, right? 
so I asked like what's going on like how come children are in the school and whatever and and they will the, the the teachers and the principal were like well a lot of our children don't have internet access at home so teaching so online learning is 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 close to impossible for majority of our students we have internet in the school but we don't have enough devices mm-hmm. right um so i instantly like posted something on my social saying there are 99 students in the school there's only 14 people with devices we need to get devices and people started really responding you know mm-hmm. like people started responding and it was later on that I learned that devices were actually sent to the school months ago and someone had decided to distribute it to who they wanted to. And <laughs> as a result, the students were left disadvantaged, right? Now, now, when I when I saw when I heard that, I was just like, I was like so taken aback. Like, why, why pick and choose, you know, and That's why? It. Why are they going through this? Like, like my kid has like two, three devices. And, <laughs> you know, like I felt, I felt hurt for it. Um, And then I started, you know, then interviewing the interview process and interviewing people. So majority of my interviews were conducted virtually. I kind of went through the community just to kind of get a feel of what it, what it was, what, what it was like. And the people who ended up being the main characters in the film um, when I spent time with them, I got to understand how all of these different issues kind of intersect with them as, as native people, mm-hmm. um, you know, and they, they have, gosh, they have, they have a lot of issues. Like I could not even touch on majority of them. Like there is the sexual abuse in their community mm-hmm. there is and it's and it's very high um there's there's a history of people being um illegally adopted from their community uh there's a lot of stuff mm. um and i didn't want my documentary or i didn't want my research to be let's talk about all of the shitty things going on in the kalinago territory I wanted it to be, how can we get the hell out of this hellhole? Like, how can I advocate on your behalf and show that this is what you're doing to get out of the situation? And that's where Annette, Natasha, and Samosa emerged. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) What a thing. I mean, I, I just, all, you know, this sort of thing happens everywhere in all different communities. And I would imagine it with no law enforcement or no, you know, authoritative, um, you know, people in the community. Do they have anything like that? Leaders? and no, um, Of course. They have a Kalinago chief. Um, they have, I mean, they're not, yeah, they're sequestered, but they, they are, they are, they are, abiding under the same laws that govern Dominica. So, so you can, they can get arrested. They can go to jail. You know, all of these things can happen. It's just, um, it's a, a huge part of it has to do with segregation. So because they're, they're segregated or they're made, they're, they're, they're almost treated as, as outcasts. Mm-hmm. You almost like you don't want to get involved all the time. You know what I mean? So it's not like, it's not that you can't or they can't. Like they, there's a police station in the Kalinago territory. Uh, really? There's, yeah, there's a police station there. You know, um, they've struggled um, to get a, a health center. They used to have a health center there. Um, but then lack of equipment. So they have like a lot. That is like a big issue because if you call an ambulance, it'll take over an hour to get to them. So yes, I know it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so like when you it when happens you things, when you hear these things like like the, their water system, they probably have water two days of the week, like running water. You know, like they take the water 
constantly. Um, they had no internet service whatsoever during the time I was there. Like it really? was like nothing. I felt like I was, I felt like I was on an island in the middle of the ocean. And I was just with them on that island. Because even communication with other people in Dominica could not was not readily um available. are they not aware of what's going on are they yes. of course so they are aware of what's going on in that territory then well i had to speak about it because a huge part of dominica's marketing is about the calinago people really yes. oh so because it's a, it's so because, if they attract tourists, is it a of tourist? course because they're indigenous? They're indigenous, but they're also they're also well. I shouldn't say that they're net extension. They're the only lot. They're the largest group of indigenous people in the Caribbean. In, oh, really? Yeah, more than the Maroons in Jamaica. So they they yeah. they have they are the largest um native indigenous group in the car that you find in the caribbean okay right okay, so, good to so, know. so so they make up um about uh about three thousand but they but they they're like very much they practice a lot of their 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 same traditions and stuff um so because of that it's a uh, it's sensationalized they do speak english though right they speak oh, english right. Yes, English. And what's, well, well, you. What's their you main remember, religion? If you remember, um, if you remember, uh, what colonizer? If you know anything about colonization, mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're more, all our products of colonization. Especially me as a Caribbean um person, you know, my ancestors were slaves, right? Um, um, so no, with that knowledge, you would understand that. As a result of colonization, they stripped you of your name, mm -hmm. they stripped you of your religion, they stripped you of your language, right? So, so as a result, to assimilate, everybody is, is either Catholic or Protestant or or whatever, or everybody either speaks English or French, which were the dominating languages uh, or Spanish at the time. Everybody um, pretty much behaves like they're Europeans. <laughs> yeah, right. right. So, so that's what colonization did, right? Yes. So, so their language is close to extinction. Like their own, there's only like one or two people that still speak the language. Mm hmm there's a there's a Kalinago um dictionary but it's it's translated into French and I'm hoping that they can get it translated into English and it was done by a priest so okay. that he could understand them so he could switch them from their religion to Catholic um Catholic to, um uh to becoming Catholics so I mean that's how we so they're 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 wrong so life. what do you see what do you see for the future though what do you see for the future how for them for them yeah. with the level of um of empowerment going on within their community um <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to um i don't want to say too much okay. but but if you know the history of kalinago people and i'm going to give you a little bit of their their history dominica was the last colonized island in the caribbean and most people wonder might wonder or might not even know that but they might wonder why that was because the kalinago people protected the island so if you came out into dominican waters your ship would get lost that was the end of you oh really right? that was the end of you um so they they protected the island fiercely there were there were about three treaties that were made between the Kalinago, um, the both the Kalinago and the Garifunas from St. Vincent mm -hmm. uh, uh, with colonizers in order so that they were they would not mess with them. Okay. So as a result of that, that's why they were deemed warlike, because 
I mean, obviously, if you come after, I mean, we see it now in 2023, if you try to cut Ukraine and, and Russia, they're fighting, right? So obviously, you're going to protect what is yours, which is what you're right. doing against Russia. So mm. if you come to my island, obviously, I'm going to protect it, which is exactly <laughs> what they did. And 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 as a result, they, Dominica, they, they, they maintain a lot of practices like their agricultural practices, which is why you can throw you can throw seeds in the ground on Dominica and it'll grow. The mm. land is so fertile. fertile. It was not bled like ha what happened to Haiti. You know, um, like we did we didn't have Dominica was is still very much untouched, right? And that is because of the Kalinago people period that is because of them like there's there's no other explanation right do they carry on with the same traditions do they of keep course, up their traditions of right course, of course they do so now because now so that is their history in 1939 they had there was this thing called the carib war which happened in dominica where the they would they they would go back the kalinagos would Dominica and they would go to neighboring French islands to buy like their cheese and their juice and you know they they took the boat and they went across and they came back you know yeah. and what was happening during that time was the other people who lived in the bourgeoisie's area didn't have that access mm -hmm. and it was always like how these people can have all of this and we don't you know <laughs> so they put this rule that pre that that prevented them from bringing in their stuff and they retaliated, which happened, which created the Carib War, where people were killed. <laughs> people were killed. Yes, really? people were killed. <laughs> the police actually were run out of the community. They literally <laughs> ran after the police, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so they know how to protect their own. Mm -hmm. And if they mobilize together, I say no more. Oh, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I say no more. I, I think they are very much empowered. A lot of them are going on to universities and coming back. A lot of them are very well educated. They have doctors in their communities. They have nurses. Mm. They have people coming up. Wow. Right? Yeah. So, so when I say coming up, I mean like a lot of uh, back in, gone are the days when they were they were oppressed. Mm -hmm. Now there are organizations like you you have um. Um, scholarships that the University of the West Indies offers that is directly directly um, makes provision for people like them. So as a result, they're they're mobilizing. Yes, and and they're strong. There's so much of a strong network. The Prime Minister of Dominica just named the President of Dominica was just elected, and that's a Kalinago woman. The really, first woman President is a Kalinago woman. Are you serious? So they're they're getting there. They're strong. Oh they're a very goodness. strong nation, and they they essentially want to be able to operate as a nation within a nation. Um, but there are a lot of political pressures and political turmoils that goes on. And we had we just just two a couple of days ago the very first female president of Dominica is a woman. That's wonderful. Isn't that something? So the future does look bright. I mean, you know, for the them. future looks bright, but a lot of changes have to be made. And a lot of these yeah. changes come from the structure, the institutional um, uh, and systemic structures that govern the island. Do they have like a national product that you'd say the Kalinagas are known for? Well, everybody knows that it's cassava. So they're known cassava. for their cassava. And yeah. Um, yeah, they're they're very good at at using at, at making their cassava bread, and even like <laughs> Natasha, who's in the film, she um she owns uh Tilu Kanawa, which is which means in Kalinago language, the little Kano, which is a restaurant where she makes all these different cassava inspired dishes. Um, so cassava is their their main their main staple. Oh gosh, I like cassava. I didn't know that. Yeah. So are there are there any people of the Kalinago that are living abroad of course of course <laughs> when I did my when I did my film um a woman a woman because we had a Q&A um at the the opening of the festival mm -hmm. and a young lady stood up at the end and she was like she was near tears because her dad was Kalinago oh. and she said that 
Now she understands why her dad felt so much shame about being Kalinago. Oh, you know, she mm-hmm. she never understood why he didn't want to be referred to as Kalinago. Um, so there are lots, lots of people all over the world, you know, living all over the world uh, who are of, of Kalinago descent. Okay. <laughs> now, um, Jail, we must congratulate you on your short documentary, you know, you. winning the best short documentary. Now, can you tell us where can we see the film though? Where right can... now, it's no longer at the festival, but it just got accepted to the Garifuna uh, Film Festival, which is in, in California. Okay. So I'm not sure if they're going to have a vir- if they'll have a virtual um, viewing. Um, I'm at, and I'm in the process of getting it on Prime. That's Amazon Prime. Amazon, okay. Uh, so I'm just in the process of it. Um, I haven't gotten a, approval yet. Um, so yes. it's been submitted and stuff. So I'm waiting for that, um, that approval. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I hope to do it, uh, to run it in, in Dominica, um, in December. So in December. So, in December. yeah. So how soon can we see it though? Um, maybe we should have done this interview when it was available <laughs> to be seen. Yeah. The the thing be when 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 films are in festivals, you have to grab it. If you don't grab right, it, right then and there, it because because um certain festivals put a lot of restrictions on where it's available. Like so, if the film is is out in the, for public um in the public domain, it's less likely to get into certain festivals. So because festivals want to have like the coveted, you know, like right. we got it first and whatever. <laughs> so. Um, so it's not available anywhere else right at this moment. It was available until the 22nd of September. For th- it ran for three weeks virtually. So a lot of folks got to see it that way. But right at this moment, unless until I get approval from Prime, it won't be available. Well, we'd like to know. Um, so you'd have to let me know so I can let our viewers know. <laughs> yes, yes, when we can definitely. see. It. Now, as we close out, um, so what would you like the viewers when we do see it? Um, what would you like them to take away from the documentary that you did? Well, essentially, I my the purpose I wanted my documentary to advocate for change. And I feel and I and I've said that at countless interviews that I think as um as Dominicans, as the Caribbean people, as people from of Caribbean backgrounds and heritage, uh, we should do better by Caninago people. Uh, because uh, a lot of and even like you know we're so worried about climate change and their practices are are so are so innovative mm-hmm. you know in the sense of if we learned a lot of it we would know what to do and how to do things better I think we should just do better by them I think better a lot of times you know funding is is received on their behalf and they never see it you know oh. yes oh yes um so that um, happens quite often yeah um, oh and and i just want us to be able to do better do better by them do better um allow them access to the same things don't use derogatory terms to refer to them you know like treat them like regular human beings because they're what regular they- human beings right so they don't wear tutus or any crazy attire. They dress well, like us, right? They dress like us. They have their <laughs> traditional wear that they wear during their traditional performances. Yeah. But other than that, they, they're regular people. They're regular. Kalinagos. Well, I learned something new. Um, I definitely did. And I enjoyed it. Um, it was nice talking with you. But I'd like to know when the film is available to be viewed. So you must let us know, okay, when that happens. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Jail. It was so thank nice you. meeting you. Thank you very much for your and time. And we'll talk again time. soon, all right? All right, take care. Have a great afternoon. You Bye-bye. Too.